so if you can um switch on your video please do so that i don't feel like i'm alone i'm going to switch mine on as well so i'm hoping you can see me hi and mute this is not an <laughs> why don't you guys to interact with me so just say hi hey hey stefan hi hi okay that's good at least i've gotten a few responses so yeah i'm gonna hit it off um so as you've heard i'm stephanie um hi matilda hi amal glad to see all of you here is this the whole a team anastasia how many are in this batch uh not really i don't know what's happening on this last week of uh of the classes <laughs> okay um but you can see since it's recorded they just follow up from youtube okay so so um so hi i'm stephanie as i was saying i'm a data engineer at safaricom i was in 10 academy batch three with anastasia so yeah i finished I uh, joined a company as a BI analyst, then switched to where I'm at right now as a data engineer. So um, I, I was to have a presentation, but I don't have a presentation. I don't want to be a teacher-student kind of session. I just wanted to be interactive, ask me any questions you have. Uh, I'll give an overview of uh, what Anastasia had asked me. Um, concerning data migration and uh, what else and uh, a day in the life of a data engineer so that's basically what i'm going to talk about uh, but you can ask me any questions feel free to interrupt yep so uh, a day in the life of a data engineer um so mostly data engineering is about moving data building pipelines um so for me what i basically do is monitoring of our data big data platform uh, building pipelines sometimes a bit of analytics so those are the main things that i do um I don't know if you have anything specific to ask me. Anyone interested in the data engineering track and what you'd like to hear from me before I delve into data migration? Anyone? Yeah, go ahead. Just unmute and ask, and then I'll reply. Okay. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for joining us. So I, I really would like to know from you how exactly, like, what exactly motivated you to go for that engineer, because um, I'm seems to be interested in that. But yeah, I just would like to to hear about your motivation. Or uh, in a okay. And also, yeah. Okay. And also, if you can, uh, like, tell us, um, like you said that it's building the pipeline and so on. But if you can just take us through one of the projects that you did, like exactly what would be looking like to be a data engineer. Okay, thank you, Rafa. At least now I have something to raise. So what motivated me to do data engineering? Um, I guess since I did the, uh, the Ten Academy training, uh, we did a lot of data science work, um, mostly uh, building the pipeline, building the models, training data, 
and things of the sort. Uh, but you realize um, in in companies you don't get to. There's always this need to have people who there's a need of especially right now there's a need of having data engineers to move this data because when you're doing the training uh, you'll find that maybe these data sets are provided to you especially by um your program manager if it's um your bubble or someone or you just, can just go to kaggle and Sorry. So yeah, you can just go to Kaggle and get these data sets yourself. So you'll probably find all this data uh, put in one place where you can just pick and build your models. But in the real world, um, there's a lot of data sets in different, like for me specifically, we have data sets in uh, different systems. All these systems bring data in. So you have to be able to um build pipelines that can come up with all this um maybe transform all this data build an etl for the data scientists to use so when i was doing the ds work um i got a bit interested in building these pipelines uh working with big data so that's why i moved and also because of the money let me say that um, I'm going to answer these questions. Uh, how do I explain to someone who asks what I do as a data engineer? Amal, are you a data engineer? First of all, let's start there. You can just unmute. Hi, Sarani. Hi. So, uh, I chose the track of data engineer, mm -hmm. but uh, um, many people are new to this field, I think, because mm -hmm. whenever I tell them that uh, I'm practicing data engineering, um, they often ask me what it is and where can you work and stuff like that. I think data engineering is so hard to explain to someone. Basically, if someone asks me what I do as a data engineer, I'll just say I build, I collect, and then I manage and convert the raw data that is coming in for the data scientist and the business analyst. So what you do as a data engineer is basically collect all the data, um, do some transformations, and you pass it to maybe the data analyst, uh, if there's BI, something of the sort. So that's basically the typical work of a data engineer. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, should I go with the hands or with what has been? Uh, okay, uh, Biniam, let's go with you. Admit. Okay, Stephanie, uh, thanks for that. So my question is, I have a couple of questions actually. One is, uh, uh, is it satisfying job? That means uh, when you do the job, uh, are you like satisfied or do you get bored a lot? And uh, uh, my second question uh, is, uh, what are the three top uh, skills or uh, qualities we need uh, uh, to get through interviews in their engineering jobs from, from your experience, I mean? Okay, okay, thanks. Um, for your first question, whether I'm satisfied, as a data engineer, <laughs> I think, uh, Rafa said, I think it's relative. Okay. Um, you know, it depends if this is what you want to do. I work in a company in a telco, Safaricom, so we have a lot of data and I get exposed to a lot of, um, a huge amount of data. So it's quite satisfying to be able to work with all these different use cases and build things that make an impact because you work with an ML engineer and the data scientist, you give them the data, they come up with a model, it's taken to production and you can actually see the outcome. So I think it's quite satisfying for me. Your second question was the top skills. Um, number one is SQL, number two is Python, number three, I'd go for Spark. SQL because you're going to be querying a lot of databases most of the data for most companies sits in maybe Oracle or Postgres or something of the sort. Uh, so being able to query that data, Python to 
for scripts uh, specifically if maybe you're scheduling some tasks maybe you want every day some data should be moved from one place to another you have to have um, uh, knowledge in python and then uh, number three spark because it's quite fast in processing and transformation so those are my top three skills that i'd go with so before i uh before rafa asked another question let me just go back to the chat and answer matilda how does a typical day look like uh is there a work-life balance where you work do the how do the projects look alike like is there a pattern okay so how does a typical day look like um so so a typical day in the morning i wake up look at the systems <laughs> someone is distracting me here anyway in the morning i wake up look at how i uh, maybe look at my nifi cluster the Kafka cluster, our Hadoop environment. If there's any issues, uh, look at my emails, if there are any requests. And if there are any requests, I work on them. But basically what I do is for a typical project, um, maybe, maybe someone wants to move data from one point to another. So most of what we do is dump the data in our data lake. So our data lake is so our data lake uh, is composed of the Hadoop framework. So we have fifty four clusters for the Hadoop um, storage system. Uh, so we we dump the data to Hadoop, uh, and then you can do processing with either NiFi, with Spark, or with Kafka for streaming. So if it's real time you'll use Kafka, if it's batch, you'll use NiFi, if there's some transformations or some ETL that you want to do, you can either use NiFi or Spark. Um, we also use Airflow for scheduling our tasks, so if there's any aggregations that are to be done or transformations, um, we schedule that using Airflow. Um, is there a work-life balance where you work? Yes, yes, there's a work-life balance. I'm not working the entire time. There are periods where you're working throughout, but most of the time, not that much. How do the projects look like? So as I said, mostly it's just getting data from. So the, our, our data lake is where all the data is stored. So like um, for the for telco, uh, we have voice data, we have SMS data, we have, uh, what else do we have? We have network data. We have voucher data, all those things. So all, all that traffic is coming through the data lake. And then uh, other teams need this data. So for example, uh, the fraud team would like um, M-Pesa transactions. M-Pesa is, is a system where transactions are made. So they'd like to be able to flag fraudulent uh, transactions. So they'd, they'd need real-time streaming of M-Pesa transactions. So they'll come to us, tell us um, we need this kind of data. We, di we need it dumped here. So we're the ones who are going to create that ETL to give them that data. And then they can do it, anything they want with it. Um, is there like a pattern? A pattern in, uh, I, didn't, I don't quite understand. Matilda, a pattern in the project or yeah, this is actually a continuation of the previous question, whether there's a pattern in the kinds of projects that you work on. Yeah, yeah, it, there, there is a pattern because um, we, we we use the same tools. It's either NiFi, Kafka, or Airflow, or Spark. So there's a pattern to certain projects. It depends on the project. So if it's like building a feature store, then I'll not use a NiFi or Kafka. Uh, I just um, query uh, BI data. I do the transformations using Spark and schedule it with using Airflow. Um, so it really depends on the needs of our team. So yeah. 
Any other question? Oh, Rafa. Mm -hmm. Rafa, please go ahead. Yeah, actually, thank you for this informative answers. It's, it's really helping. And uh, my, my question now is related to what Amal asked uh, earlier. So when you explain a data engineer to people, so I mean, um, the difference between analysts, data analysts and data scientists and data engineers, even I had really like read so many articles and watch YouTube videos, I still feel the overlapping is really huge between them. And I just can't get, um, stop thinking of really what it's like, um, how, how people are really separating between those vital positions. Yeah. Okay, so you want to know the difference between a BI analyst, a data scientist and a data engineer? Uh, yes, actually, scientists for me is much clearer. That uh, is the one who will do the research more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say. And for the analyst, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's still when I see the, um, you know, the, uh, what is it called? Like the roles when it's mm -hmm. in every job position, when they just like point out what will be the roles for a data analyst and data engineer, they are sometimes like just mostly the same. So, yeah, sure, sure. I've seen job descriptions where um, um, the title is a BI analyst, but Yeah, so I've seen job descriptions where the title is a BI analyst, but you find um, them asking for Spark. They want you to know uh, maybe the Azure AWS Cloud Kinesis, how to transform data. And you see, that's 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 not what a BI analyst should be doing. So for me, what I think, okay, according to our company, but also as a general um, knowledge, a BI analyst basically uh, comes up with they do they do um, analysis of the data, but not in depth like a like a data scientist because a data scientist will uh, look at the data, do more research, but a BI analyst will just look at it from um, a high level view. So they won't they won't go do further research. If you give them data for maybe transactions, they'll just do analysis of how many transactions were done just from a high level. And then a data scientist will come and do more research on these kind of transactions. What happened to these kind of transactions? Um, but not basically looking at um, just the high level view. Also, a BI analyst does not um, a BI analyst just connects to a database or um, a system where the data is stored and does not create ETLs. So that's the work of a data engineer. Data engineer will make sure that this data that the BI analyst is actually here in this data store. And then the BI analyst can come do their queries and so forth and so on. But uh, you're not supposed, as a BI analyst, you're not supposed to be doing. But they cut across. It depends with the company. Some companies require BI analysts to do data engineering work. Um, some companies require data scientists to do data engineering work. So it really depends on how mature a company is and if they really know uh, the kind of roles that they want. I see. And in terms of technologies used and tools, like uh, the bare minimum expected for all of three is just uh, the, those you mentioned before, SQL and Python as far yes, as this. Yes, and Spock, yeah. Those are the bare minimum. Okay, thank you. So Diane is asked that the night, okay, I don't know how to spell that. Please, sorry if I've butchered your name. <laughs> so how did you feel when you first joined the So I first joined a company, I'm a, I'm in Kenya, but I joined a company in Nigeria. Uh, that's where I was placed when I finished Ten Academy. I joined as a BI analyst. So basically, there I was just building reports, doing queries, and all that. 
so how did I feel? I felt really nice. <laughs> I don't know if uh, it was nice. It was nice experience. I got to work from with people who uh, were not in the same country, were not in the same time zone. Um, you, it was it was a whole new experience. It felt really nice. How was your first month experience? So it was <laughs> when I first joined. I really didn't know what I was doing because here at 10, 10 Academy we are taught how to build this uh, good models how to you know it was not what I had done here at 10 Academy so it was a bit different but um, after some time uh, after I joined the company I got to learn how they do what they do uh, the culture the tools they used and then uh, if you're a quick learner, it's quite easy to pick up things and then it all ended well. So yeah, so I stayed at that company for six months before I shifted. Biniam, go ahead. Okay, Stephen. So uh, during your interviews back in, when you were searching for jobs, mm -hmm. uh, what was, was there anything that you wished you had, uh, you prepared for or uh, you knew uh, before going into the interviews and uh, how did the interviews go how many interviews did you go to and uh, uh, how did they end up okay um so for the interview but <laughs> um i had like i had three interviews i guess yes i had three interviews for my first job and also the one i'm currently at so the first interview was on SQL and Python, uh, where there are some questions based on that. Uh, I also had to do an installation of um, a tool called Metab Metabox or something of the sort, I can't remember, but it was for analysis and then I did analysis of that data. So um, the second, second interview, I took the team through what I had done. And then the third one, it was just a one-on-one -on -one where we talked, they got to know me, told me about their culture and all that. So first of all, it's quite important to look at the job description and look at the uh, the skills that they're looking for. So that, um, first of all, make sure that you're not applying with the same CV to every job or every company. So if you found a company that you really like, um, look at the job description, look at the skills that they're looking for and make sure that your CV matches what the company is looking for. So don't have just a one fit all uh, CV. Tailor your CV for everything that you're applying for. So that's what I did when I was applying for my second, um, for the second one. So they wanted, um, oh really, we will change CV every day. Yes, Rafa. <laughs> You don't, it's like, <laughs> you don't apply with, uh, it's not changing everything, but just making sure that, you know, if, if you, if you, if you apply with just one CV and target all of them, your chances or probability of you getting a job is not as high as someone who has tailored their CV for that specific company. So when, um, when they're looking at the CVs, they'll always look at those specific, um, tools or skills that they need so if you are not tailored to that company then you might just miss it although you're really good so yeah that's that's uh one of the things that i like to advise you um also um own the interview so whenever um they ask you questions um you've looked at the job description you've seen the kind of tools that uh or the skills that they want don't just go into an interview without having done your research. Make sure you go look at, maybe if it's Spark, um, look at a simple project that you can do with Spark, uh, get acquainted with it, so that when it's the um, time for the interview and they ask you, oh, what have you done with Spark? They'll say, oh, I've actually done this and this and this. Put your projects there, especially the projects that you've done at 10 Academy, and when they ask you about these projects, make sure that you articulate clearly what you did, uh, what you achieved, and the kind of tools that you used. So don't just go um, into an interview and, you know, 
make sure you own the interview make sure that they know the impact that you have or you're going to make in that company because of the skills that you've got so those are the two things i'd like to advise yep i'm going to answer the next question which is how did you transition from one work to another uh it was quite easy <laughs> um i guess when you always join the first company you don't know everything and you don't know everything so i just made sure when i joined um i got to know what they're working on i was put on probation actually for three months so that's the time i took to really understand uh, the whole system understand where each uh, data is where the data is where um which which teams I'm supposed to work with, get acquainted with them. Um, if I had any challenges, I always reached out. Um, yes, so it was quite easy. So when I got my first project, I was very clear on what happens in our team. And it was easy for me to pick up everything quite quick. So yeah. And I actually transitioned because I didn't like the BI analyst role. I thought um, just querying data and producing reports was not what I wanted to do the rest of my life. So I challenged myself to uh, apply for something that I felt was good enough or would make an impact. So yeah. Any more questions? Uh, so, Anastasia had asked me to talk about data migration. I don't know why she asked me specifically for data migration. And is there any specific reason why? Or because you saw that I spoke? <laughs> okay, so this, this week uh, they're doing a data engineering project and it's an extension from last week. And this week they're focusing on the migration aspect from one uh, platform to another just uh, to get that feel of change and automation in case it happens in a project. So when I saw that you actually did a talk on data migration, I was like, nice. <laughs> this is really mm. nice. Yeah. Rafa, would you mind uh, maybe telling me what the project is about? Okay. So I'm not really fully grasping um, the idea, but I'll do my best to tell you. So basically, uh, Last week, we had to build um, we had to build a data warehouse. Okay, for um, it was for traffic data, and that was like uh, we used one of the databases like SQL, MySQL, and uh, we used Redshift for that. And for this week challenge, we had to migrate those, all of what we had. And uh, for instance, if you use MySQL, you had to uh, shift that to Postgres. And um, if you used Redshift, we had to do it with Superset. Superset, yeah. And like, and we, we, we need to do some automation here because we don't want to do that manually because if we have a very large data and we need to make sure after that, if we migrate it successfully or not. So basically that we are assigned to do what we are assigned to do, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. But maybe you can ask another trainee to maybe explain <laughs> more. Who else? Yes. Who else would like to go? Just tell me. Uh... Thank you, Rafa, by the way. Okay, uh, just to add what uh, to what Rafa just said, uh, last week was just uh, 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 we, we were required to build uh, a data pipeline that uh, transports a traffic data from I think Pinoma site. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to pronounce the site, but there is a website that gives you like a CCD files, and then we download that to local uh, storage, and then we build. Uh, uh, an airflow orchestrated uh, pipeline that uh, extracts this data uh, and then it uh, loads it into a warehouse and then we 
perform some kind of transformation using DBT on it. Uh, after then, after that, we moved it to our uh, final uh, uh, tables like uh, our uh, our uh, dimension in the uh, fact tables. And then after that, uh, yeah, uh, we we visualized it using Redash. This week, uh, we are required to mm, migrate this pipeline uh, into a more uh, sustainable one. That means we'll be uh, the database uh, the server to Postgres from MySQL to Postgres. And uh, the visualizing uh, tool, we used Redash before, so now we're required to use Superset. So the idea is to uh, migrate uh, you know, the models we wrote uh, in uh, DBT <coughs> and uh, the data as well, as well in some other uh, codes. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but uh, to my understanding, that's a requirement. Mm, okay, cool. So um, and that's a good project. I'm glad that you're working with DBT, you're working with Airflow, so you're getting hands-on experience. Uh, because this is actually what you're going to use uh, when you join companies. Um, I guess for this particular task, uh, Binyam, let me just engage you. For this particular task, you were told which um, tools to use, which DB to use, and all that, right? Yeah, we're, uh, we're told to use Postgres. Um, uh, actually, uh, some of us were using uh, Postgres already last week, and some of us were using MySQL. So. This week we are just asked to you know exchange exchange that. Uh, that means if you are if you work with MySQL last week, yeah. uh, this week we'll be working on we'll, we'll be working with Postgres and vice versa. And the uh, uh, visualization tool is uh, last week we all used Redash. Now we are required to use uh, Superset Apache Superset. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um. Yeah, that's it's it's a it's a nice project uh, moving data, data migration. Um, I'd like to challenge. Okay, so right now at Ten Academy, you're being told um, this is the particular tool you're supposed to use. Um, this will not be the case, especially where you're going to work. Most likely, are you giving a project? You are supposed to um, be able to know which database to use according to the type of data that you've been given. So if it's SQL, if it's relation, it's a relational kind of um, data, if it's a document based, all that um, type of data. So it's good that you're getting hands-on experience. I'd like to challenge you to um, do data migration to cloud because right now I know a lot of companies are moving to cloud. So try get maybe some of that data, move it to an S3 bucket, um, do something. S3 bucket is for AWS or whichever platform that you'd like to use, whether it's Azure, it's GCP or AWS. So right now I'm doing a project um, for data migration. Uh, we are migrating some of our data to the cloud, to AWS. Um, um, so I don't know what specifically to talk about for data migration because um, Maybe it uh, uh, yeah. maybe it may it might help if we ask uh, specific questions about the project. Yes. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, uh, for example, we, uh, I was working on. I think the idea of uh, this week's project is, uh, you know, to remove the the need to, you know, rebuild every aspect of the pipeline when uh, some technologies are to be exchanged or uh, replaced. So. Uh, the idea is to, you know, maintain uh, the code we wrote or the models in the charts, like the visual for the yeah, we SQL based charts we mm -hmm. created. We want to make, you know, uh, maintain those codes and reuse them in our new pipeline. So, uh, mm -hmm. with that uh, idea in mind, mm -hmm. uh, do you have any suggestion as to how we can uh, convert, like? Uh, uh, a DBT model that has been wrote for like MySQL to uh, or Postgres one because the SQL syntax are a bit different for the two. So uh, if you know anything about like Jinja or uh, DBT in general, uh, do you think there is a way to uh, 
uh, reuses the model that has been written for MySQL for to uh, on Redash, I mean on Postgres on, or vice versa. So you're asking if I know another tool like Ginger for DBT that can be used to um, do the migration without using the SQL-like code, right? Yeah, yeah, the SQL code is different for uh, MySQL in Postgres, so better way to adapt or migrate uh, that, that to, you know, for the different platform without uh, rewriting it. <laughs> So you said you're using um, Airflow to to schedule these tasks, right? Can you take yes. me through, just take me through the whole um, getting data from SQL, what you're using, scheduling using Airflow. Just take me through that. Okay, uh, uh, we used, uh, uh, in my case, I'm not sure about the others, but in my, in my okay. case, uh, I'm only using uh, three operators in Airflow. That means uh, the Python operator. Mm -hmm. the bash operator in the uh, in, in, Air Airflow. Yeah, in airflow yeah uh -huh. yeah uh, in the in the our in my dag scripts i used uh, these three operators to run uh, my python codes that mm -hmm. loads and extracts the data from csv and uh, uploads it to the database it could be mysql mm -hmm. or postgres so now mm -hmm. it's currently inside the my uh, mysql for me and uh, the goal is to uh, first to migrate the data to the Postgres database and then migrate the uh, DBT, the, the transformation modules as well, uh, which are written in SQL. So those into uh, the one that works with Postgres database as well. Why didn't you do the whole thing on Airflow? Why didn't you just extract the data, um, query, extract the data, so you're extracting the data and putting it in an SQL uh, database, right? Yes, yeah. And then moving data well, the from SQL to... Uh, then uh, we, we, like, we didn't move it, but we used the Redash to visualize the data that's, that's stored in the database. Okay, okay. Okay. We used the Airflow, but we uh, we used the Airflow to orchestrate uh, like uh, DBT yeah. and yeah. Uh, Python codes. Yeah. Mm, what other? Okay, okay. I don't think there's an. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any open source tool that you would have used. Um, maybe I can get back to you on this. Maybe okay. if Anastasia can send me a template of the of the project description, and then I can do it. And maybe we can go through the whole solution with the guys who will be interested. And then okay. we can share ideas on what you built and versus what I built and why I did it my way and you did it your way. That's good. Right. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Anastasia, please treat me as a student <laughs> for that project. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll send uh, the document. I'll share it. Yeah. yeah, we can just schedule a 30 minutes call. We go through it and yeah, just see. Okay, I guess there are no more questions. Um, uh, I don't know if anyone has any question. If not, so I'm going to uh, give it back to Anastasia. Um, maybe I have one question or maybe just a follow-up because uh, you've mentioned you're doing the data migration uh, from local to to cloud and one other thing that we were actually maybe wanted to achieve this week was automation and uh, could you maybe just in the current project you're doing to add, uh, I'm assuming it's to S3 buckets, if there's any form of automation you guys are using in that uh, migration and uh, maybe just uh, say a little bit on that. Okay, so um, for a particular project, we're moving data to AWS. Uh, so the pipeline on premise, on premise is the data that we have um, in our data centers. So we are we have a NiFi pipeline.
that gets data from our Hadoop data lake. So our data lake uh, is based on Hadoop. So getting data from that, please, if 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 you don't know Hadoop, just go Google. <laughs> I might just be saying things here that you guys don't understand, but Hadoop is um, basically a big data framework. If you have lots of terabytes of data, you can store Hadoop, retrieve uh, the data at um, at a high high speed than uh, the the popular SQL or relational databases. So what we do is we get data from Hadoop. We have a NiFi pipeline. I don't know if please Anastasia, please stop recording for just one minute so that I can do something illegal. <laughs> I don't want you recording.